what we would all give to have SRK laying on laying on our chests like he is on mine. Wow, covering up Kajal. <laughs> <laughs> Back to our stupid right to you. It's up, Corbin. I'm Rick. And you can follow us on Instagram, Twitter, and you say content. Thank you for being on hot. It's good. Hey, blah, 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 blah. There's not even words anymore. Ow. Um, face doing that? Yeah. Wow, 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 wow. Anyways, uh, today, uh, oh. Uh, the reason we're like this, uh, I've been feeling under the weather the past couple days, and uh, I'm waiting on a COVID test. Uh, apparently, they're taking a long time with them currently because you know a lot of people have COVID right now. Um, I feel I feel good, but it's uh, out of abundance of caution. We don't want to continue the spread of uh, of this. So that's you'll see a couple of these Skype videos, um, but this is not going to be a permanent thing. Hopefully, I'm just negative and just have a, a bug. But I'm sure Rick wouldn't want a bug either. So you're always <laughs> negative. <laughs> Today, as you saw from the title, we're doing a movie review of the what is this year? Seventy-two, nineteen seventy-two Italian film. Yep. Pukiza, pukiza, <laughs> pukiza. Hey, it's a pukiza. It's a pukiza. It's a, it's a, pukiza. <laughs> it's a pukiza. How you doing? Uh, we've seen a lot of songs from this. I don't know how many. I think it's probably like four or five. I'd imagine that we saw of of this film before we actually watched it. Uh, directed by Kamal yeah. Amrohi. Yeah, um, Amrohi. Uh, written by him as well. Uh, uh-huh. and starring Akosh Kumar, Mina Kumari, Raj Kumar, Vina, uh, and a, I mean a lot. There's a lot of people in this film. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And absolutely a lot of people in the film. But yes, it's a 1972 musical drama romance uh, film. It's a, a classic. If you go on like IMDb and look up like the, the greatest Bollywood films of all time, obviously we've seen a lot of them. But this is yeah. this is high up there on a lot of those lists. Uh, and it was yeah. obviously highly recommended from a lot of people as well. So obviously classic month continuing. This is what we decided to go with. Uh, obviously, it's 100 Cent's Boy Review, if you haven't watched it. Uh, Rick, I think you watched it on YouTube. Uh, YouTube, yeah, you can rent it on YouTube. I saw it on, uh, uh, yeah, I rented it on Apple. Uh, you can rent it there as well. So uh, there's many different ways you can see it. It might be available somewhere else in India. Actually, we they have stuff that, you know, we don't have at all. But Rick, your initial thoughts, please. Yeah, and this is, uh, for the, all of you interested, it's our seventh of the year it's our 133rd Hindi film and our 214th all time. And I have a paragraph. Okay. Um, so I'm going to read it just from my phone here. Of all the films we've seen, classic or otherwise, I can't think of one that compares to Pakiza in terms of its regal elegance or most especially its seemingly inseparable representative qualities between the life of the movie's star and the life of the character she portrays. It's a film dripping in camphor, rose water, lavender, and sandalwood. It's also a film dripping in pathos, profundity, emotion, and tears. And while it has a couple of very small technical problems, those aren't worthy to even to be mentioned in the same way you would have ignored a small chip in the floor of Westminster Abbey during the wedding of Princess Diana. All eyes and memories would be and should be forever on the princess. I loved this movie. (laughs) I couldn't tell from that paragraph. Yeah, it was quite an, an I, eloquent I, paragraph. I, I tried to really give a level of comparable uh, eloquence because I feel it's a very eloquent and poetic film. It, it, deserving it felt of, poetic of, to me. It felt yeah, very poetic. Yeah. Very was, poetic. And I meant that. It, it felt like the, the film is literally, it, it's dripping in pathos and emotion and it's almost like I could smell the, the the oils that were perfumed all over the the film, and it had a. Uh, it's just if you're a, if you love poetry and you love watching a sunset, I don't know how you couldn't l- like the movie. I mean, what did you think? Oh, I liked it a lot. It was it, it was okay, like good. watching poetry. <laughs> no, no, yeah, it was like watching uh, poetry in motion. That's what it felt like. Like obviously, yeah. on every level, obviously the the, the dialogue. 
And but the the cinematography, the set design, the lighting, the acting, it all felt like almost just you took a poem and you kind of put it into motion. That's kind of what it felt yeah. like. Um, yeah. And it's 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 funny because I, I saw when you posted on Twitter, I looked at the comments. And some people said, this is something our parents watched when we were kids and it bored the spit out of us. <laughs> <laughs> I, I can see how a little kid would be really annoyed having to sit through it. It's not a kid movie. Yeah, uh, absolutely. And it's interesting you, interesting you brought that up because I did. You know, we talk about juicy content. So as I was watching it, I posted it on both Twitter and I put it in my story on Instagram and said, what movie am I watching? I got to tell you, never, because I've done that before. I've taken a screenshot of what I'm watching. I've never gotten the kind of response. I got hundreds of messages from people excited that I was watching. A couple of people thought it was Mughali Azam, but the majority, 99% of them. We've already seen that. Pisa. So yeah, I, I was like, wow, this is a, this is a well-known and loved movie. Yeah. It's, I think like, when, like I said, when you go on IMDb, it's like one of the top five in there greatest Bollywood films of all time uh, up there with yeah. Mughal Azam and, and, and all those films that we've, that we've kind of seen here in the past. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, let's just uh, dive into it. Uh, what, what, what do you want to start with? Rick? There's a lot to talk about. Uh, let's start with, uh, I, I think we should just go straight to Pekiza her herself. And let's talk yeah. about Mina. Uh, and I have a lot. Go ahead. Go start, start us off. Yeah. I mean, first of all, I did a lot of research about her personal life um, because we're, you know, we're new to her. And yeah. I, when I had put that post up, I had a lot of people saying to me, uh, you, you really need to know a few things. First of all, and you probably know this, the fact that she died very shortly after this film was completed and released. Yeah. And I don't think I read this into the film because I did a lot of the, what I was looking for after, but and if she's this way in all of her films, it wouldn't surprise me. But just like her character, I felt like Mina carried this this deep sadness that even when she smiled, there's a sadness in her eyes. And I don't think that was just for the portrayal of this character. I think this is one of those things where her own personal life wasn't something she had to go very far to bring out into the character because I think she herself had dealt for years with struggles that were just for lack of a better term, oozing out of her being. And it added in a weird way, it added to her beauty. And I, it's not something I would wish on anyone, but I, I don't think anyone, it reminded, did you ever see On Golden Pond with Henry Fonda and, and Catherine Hepburn? No. It's a great film. Jane Fonda bought the rights for it, Henry Fonda's daughter. And it was his last motion picture. He won an Oscar, his first Oscar for it. But, it's at the end of his life and the character in that of Norman that he portrays as a man who knows he's nearing the end of his life and, and doesn't want to admit he's scared. Mm. And there's so much of Henry Fonda's own personal stuff. And when he fights with his daughter, who's played by Jane Fonda, she said it was very therapeutic. So it was this art imitating life that's so close to home. This is a very rare film, I think, in terms of the actress not only being brilliant, but bringing something to the character that no one else could then or ever will. Yeah, I thought she was she was absolutely brilliant. She's extremely striking, right when she she comes on screen, oh. like uh, oh. right when she pops off, and then obviously her 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 she just has an amazing screen presence about her, um, and similar absolutely. to but very different to like a Sri Devi or or, or um, a Shwarya. Very or, different. Very different, but the same. Like, oh, this is I'm captivated just by you looking at the camera uh obviously she she knew what she was doing and man did she convey a lot without saying very much uh which was like kind of what you're saying it's it was it's one of those <clears throat> she has the it factor for sure but yeah there was a lot going on behind her eyes a lot yeah. and that that's obviously very intriguing and it's 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 kind of fun when you have an, an actor who you know you don't there's not i mean i know she obviously she's a star and she had dialogue but it's not a crazy amount of dialogue. I'd say most of the film is more kind of in silence oh, for her. Absolutely. Very much in silence. I'm afraid of being in silence. And I, the only one I could equate it to, which was of her same era, it's different, but comparable is whenever I watch Judy Garland, 
because of what I know of her personal life, I always see behind the smile, the little girl back there crying out and wishing things could be different for her. And if you could go back in time, you wish you could reach in and help her. I felt that from her in this film. And, and it's just odd that this character is exactly that because my understanding of her personal life was, and she had been married to the director for a, a good period of time, that yeah. their relationship was not a healthy relationship and that she was addicted to alcohol, which eventually became her ultimate demise with cirrhosis of the liver. And that, that sadness of the personal life was just all over her face that even when she smiled, there was still this, this sadness that lends itself well to the role, but on a personal level, you look at her and there's a tragic nature about her that reminds me a lot of her and as well as like Marilyn Monroe, which are different than the people like, say, James Dean, who were taken to early. I'm talking about people who went through profound sadness and never got to escape it in this life. And I, yeah. I it, it's very unique. I don't think I'm, it's very, very rare in cinema to have something like that. Yeah. And it was also a great story concept of this film for 1972 very, about very a, a, a bunch of prostitutes right it, essentially what, what it was yeah. uh high-end prostitutes yeah yeah in 1972 in india um and so yep. obviously in, in indians might not be surprised uh by that they're like oh yeah we've always been like that but it's like it just it seems like it's it's it was really progressive for the time to tell a story where this person is the heroine um and from that but i also i liked the 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 our our, our male lead in this uh what was this what's absolutely his name? Uh, raj was, kumar thank you uh raj kumar one he he has a great look uh <laughs> uh i he, he's who's he related to um i knew this um i feel like he he is it's not but Oscar, it's not right? who you would necessarily no it's not who you would necessarily uh, Babe Raj Kumar relationally is related to you had told me earlier um, that he had that there's someone currently working or was working that is related to Raj Kumar. Don't remember. Maybe I'm maybe mm -hmm. I'm making you guys can up. let us know in the comments. I thought he was. Uh, yeah, I thought yeah, I thought he was too. But I thought he did a phenomenal job in in, in bringing that me chemistry too. in the beginning. Uh, to them and his whole character yeah. uh, as well. Which, it, it brought you on a roller coaster ride uh, with with him he and has, their, I, their whole relationship. I I thought he had a very unique way of being both a gentle and kind man without conveying any meekness or weakness at all. He seemed like he was very strong. Meekness is, is the better word. He was meek, not weak, because meekness is strength reserved. Yeah. Um, and I believed him wholeheartedly. I mean, I was rooting for them. I believed he was in love with her. I felt the whole story of him putting the note in her foot and then them eventually getting back together again, which, by the way, everybody, in case anyone was wondering, don't shoot elephants. Um, that are just standing <laughs> there. Like, what the <laughs> fuck? Are you standing there? It's like, why are you shooting um, at them? I know. It's the day. It's a period. We're just uh, just uh, laughing a little bit. Oh but I, I felt... I felt he was great, and I felt one of my favorite moments. I actually rewatched the moment with Indrani. We rewatched several moments. Um, the moment when her biological dad, the uncle, is shot, and he's holding him, and it's the whole realization going on. And he says to him, "We're going to put you, and you're going to be in the palanquin with us when we get married." And I, I felt like all three of them. We're just right, right there. Just yeah. right. I, I can't imagine that when they hit cut, that there wasn't some applause on set. Yeah, absolutely. They were, they were so good together. They had great chemistry. Um, he, yeah. he, they're both have that, that it factor that you look for in, in, in lead actors as well for this time. Yeah. Um, yeah. So I'd love to see more of their work. The, I mean, the other part of this that was obvious from the songs that we saw, but also right when it opened was the, the set design and the cinematography of this thing was I'm I'm assuming this is where Sanjay Leel Bansali, on top of Mughali Azam, got his inspiration for what he loves to do, right? I mean, it has to be. This and Mughali Azam uh, have to, to be, be like his like favorite films. Ha has to be. <laughs> yeah. And 
it, I mean, there was there was a moment I took a screenshot of it. Every piece and it's was artwork. One of those. Every piece was artwork, and there were moments where it was outdoors, and it was like the only way you get that shot is because you happened upon a uh, serendipitous moment. Um, yeah, it's just beautiful set design, beautiful costume design, beautiful cinematography, the patience of the storytelling, oh, just uh, just the constant oil and smoke, like incense and oils. Everything was thick. Everything moved slowly. Every And it wasn't, while it's stylistic, it wasn't contrived. It wasn't yeah. forcing style as much as it was just being a particular thing. Uh, really impressive. And yeah. the score and the music. Yeah. And we had seen like four or five songs, I think, already reacted to that are on the channel. And they're all amazing. But like, this is yeah. one of those films that every single song is incredible. And it's so beautiful. And it's it kind of continues the poetry theme of the entire film, I feel. Oh, I absolutely agree. Mm. Absolutely agree. Yeah, um, that... It's just a delight. I could turn it like when I was talking to Andrani about it afterwards, because she had seen it long ago. Yeah. And we were, we were watching some musical numbers and stuff. I could have I could have watched it again yesterday or the second time. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, the, the, the whole score of it was all amazing. The, uh, the, the writing, like I had said before, which is very progressive for 1972 in, in Bollywood, in, in my opinion, uh, was, was really great. This is almost like a pretty woman, but like <laughs> more serious, obviously. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Essentially. Yeah. Um, uh, then, the, then that movie right there, but yeah, it's, this was a grand on an epic scale, and I could see why. You know, the, the those comments that you got in your in your Twitter feed, I could see it, especially if you're not into slow moving films. But if you can buy in and are just like, I don't. Obviously, this is our our style of film. We we really enjoy good acting, good writing, great cinematography. Like it's almost like a Sanjay Lee Bansali film. I could watch this just to watch what's on screen, like the visuals. Sure. Absolutely. Like you could just do that, and then on top of that, they've added some great performances, great song numbers. Um, so it's it's not a fast moving thing. So if you're if you're a kid, I could see exactly like if you like I what I would equate it to is parents often when I was a kid watch Gone with the Wind, and that thing mm -hmm. is long. That is a long film. <laughs> yeah. And so as a kid, you can't appreciate that style of film. It's, sure. it's, it's just too slow. It's about stuff that you don't understand. Um, and so I, I kind of equate it to something like that. Uh, Cause when I was a kid, I was like, Oh, my mom always watches gone with the wind. I don't want to watch gone with the wind. <laughs> yeah. And or the 10 commandments. Yes. Uh, or or yeah. stuff like that. But obviously as you get older and you could appreciate poetry, right? Cause kids don't really appreciate poetry. Um, this is one of those films that, and, and, I was thinking about, um, man, we've seen a lot of really good classics this month. Yeah, this has have. been this has been a great classic month. Um, it really has, and especially with like the um, set design and cinematography side <laughs> of of stuff. Yeah, <laughs> just been knocking it out of the park. It's been left and right, just one six after the other. <laughs> um, um, and uh, like. And like one of the things as well, like there were a couple of small technical issues I don't even yeah. need to talk about. We're very, I'm talking about three or four, but one that I do want to point out that I thought was great and it's small is the that whole climactic scene where she's dancing and then she looks up and Raj has left and she knocks over the lamp, the big chandelier lamp, yeah. and starts dancing through the broken glass. Oh, and then yeah, her, her dance is so unbridled and so primal and painful great scene and great dance what that shot as she's going through the glass you see her go through the glass and then halfway through the singular shot her feet start to bleed and and Johnny said uh, how, how did they how did they do what did they do did they yeah. have an apparatus up her pant leg to slowly let the blood come out through her under her feet because it's it's seamless it looks like she danced across and started bleeding yeah i was wondering how she did that as well did you ever figure it out Nope. Yeah, I was I was trying to figure it out as I was watching. I was like, this is 1972, so it was probably made 1970-ish, 1971. And in India. And so, like, for props, they, they were still, like, 
they were still movie magic back then. Like it was like you, mm-hmm. you can't put in stuff CGI like you can now. Yeah, it's very <laughs> practical effects. Yeah, I didn't. I was like, did she have something maybe in like the ball of her foot that <laughs> like, right. or or did she have like? I don't. I don't even know. Yeah, if you guys know how how that scene, because that was really impressive. I'm glad you brought that up. That like that whole thing when she was dancing across, and then halfway through she started bleeding. It was really, I, really impressive um, yeah. how that was done. So if you guys know any, this would be a fun one uh, for for some movie magic, like behind the scenes stuff. If they ever have any stuff like that for old films, sure, sure. Um, and, and and then another moment I just want to mention that I thought is like the central point for her name. I thought the reveal of her name was beautiful. It's mm-hmm. in that moment when she's being asked, "What's your name?" and she won't say because she knows if she mentions the name, she's going to be notorious you know that high-end whore and mm-hmm. she won't speak her name and he turns to her and calls her pure one and she looks at him it's an emotional moment for him to i love that it's called this and i love that that was the reveal of the name it's just yeah great <laughs> absolutely great uh lived up to the uh to the high I also like i i looked on youtube because i was like somebody else has had to have reviewed this before no one Wow, that's a shame. Uh, obviously, there's a bunch of Indians who have seen it. Obviously, um, obviously, I think this is like one of the ones that like they've all seen. But like, you know how like we've reviewed Shole, yeah. we've reviewed all the God, sure. like all these other films that are classics, and there's always other reviews that are people who have done it yeah. before. And, you know, like Jimmy, yeah. obviously, Jimmy watches a lot, a lot of films. But yeah, there's nothing that I can find on YouTube of anybody oh. reviewing this film. Uh, so hopefully maybe this will get some people to watch it. Cause I think it's definitely one that's absolutely worth a watch by everyone. If you're not a child, uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, if you, you, have to, know, you have to be an adult to watch this one. Yeah. Not because there's sex yeah. or anything, but just because of the, it's slow. It's mature. Uh, yeah. It's mature. <laughs> it's like a fine wine. Kids can't appreciate it fine wine. It's, it's like, it's like kids, kids would rather have vanilla ice cream. They don't want creme brulee. And this is creme brulee. I'm not a huge fan of creme brulee. I like, I like creme brulee, but it's not, not amazing. But well, I'm just using it as an example of... While you're dumb. Uh, anyways, <laughs> let us know what uh, the next classic should be. It's been a fantastic classic month. And obviously, yeah. this is not. we're not going to only watch classics during classic month. So the, the entire rest of the year, we will watch classics. We watched Mughali Azam in like July of last year. So let us know what the next classic... I'm sure next classic month, we will get to a lot more classics. Uh, cause I, I do enjoy classic month. I think it's a fantastic thing. Help us better understand Bali and not just Bollywood, but Indian cinema as a whole and, and how it's grown. And so I really appreciate it. So let us know what should be our next classic film down below. <laughs>